Today we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday where we really focus on the love of God founded in his mercy for us. That while we were still sinners, he sacrificed himself on the cross. From the cross, Jesus looked at his own persecutors and said, Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. I can only imagine the apostles' shock and fear and awe all at the same time, all of the emotions that kind of welled up within them this first night after the resurrection. And Christ came to them in the upper room. Now, some of the disciples had seen him earlier in the day, as we heard of this last week on the road to Emmaus, where there are two of the disciples walking to Emmaus, a seven-mile walk, and Christ meets them there, doesn't make himself known, but asks, where are you going? Where are you coming from? And he opens up for them the scriptures, but he's made known to them in the breaking of the bread. And when they come face to face with Christ and they recognize him, they get up. They don't finish their meal. They get dressed and they go back to Jerusalem. And that's where we find them meeting the other disciples in this upper room where Jesus then comes and reveals himself to them. Yet Thomas was missing. Poor Thomas. The few times that we hear about him in Scripture, in scripture we either see him as a doubter or we see him as being cynical. Do you remember from the passion narrative that we read on Palm Sunday? What was the one line that Thomas had once Jesus said that they were supposed to go to Jerusalem? After he had said, hey, we don't want to go back there. They're looking to kill you and, and, to, and to capture you and to arrest you. Thomas's one line is, well, I guess we're going to go be murdered with him as well. <laughs> or what he really says is, we shall go to die with him as well. That Thomas is much like us at times in our lives. When things don't go quite our way, we become people of doubt. We want tactile, physical proof many times for what is happening in our lives. But many times, that's not how the Lord speaks to us. Though he has given us a very reachable way to understand how he's speaking to us. Through the word of God, through the scriptures, we hear all of the things that he's calling us to do. In our first two readings today, we hear that to truly love God and to be a person that loves God is to follow his commandments. And that the commandments were not given to us as punishment, but as freedom. But many times, as we were to our parents growing up, we are to the Lord as adults. We don't want to be told what to do. We don't want to be dictated towards because I'm free. I know what's best. And yet we fall flat on our face time and time again when we think we know what's best. But yet the Lord sets it out for us in the fullness of time and shows us how we are to live, how we are to love, how we are to exist, and yet... We are like Thomas so many times, we don't quite get it the first, second, third, or 14 millionth time. And so, when we are asked, how many times must we be forgiven, it's almost like, how many times must we forgive? Well, 70 times, 7 times, or 77 times, as often as it takes for us to get it right. As often as it takes for our neighbor to get it right. And yet we struggle in faith. As Catholics, we have both scripture and tradition, the two lungs of the church, to give us life. And it's always fascinating to me when we speak with many of our non-Catholic Christian brothers and sisters that say, if it's not in scripture, it didn't happen. To which I refer them to today's gospel. Now, Jesus did many other things in the presence of the disciples that are not written in this book. <laughs> Not everything that Christ did, not everything that Christ said was written down. And it doesn't end when Christ ascends. It doesn't end with the book of Revelation. For Christ continues to speak through us, through the saints, through the prophets that have come after Christ. 
Today we celebrate the Feast of the Divine Mercy, which is a new feast promulgated by Pope St. John Paul II as the second Sunday of Easter to remind us of just how loving and merciful our Heavenly Father is. That we are each sinners, but we are not to define ourselves by our sin, just as we are not to define Thomas as just a doubter or a cynic, but instead to define ourselves as we are called to define each other, first and foremost, as children of God. When we see through the lens and the vision of the love of God, everything is made clear. You know, sometimes people come to me and say, Father, why does the church like to point out my sins? And I say, well, we don't. But if you ask me if this is a sin or this isn't a sin, I'm going to tell you the truth. So it's sometimes like, don't ask the question if you don't want the answer. <laughs> But many times we know that we are sinners, but that's not what defines us. If we don't recognize, though, our sinfulness, we don't recognize our need for a Savior. That is what we are missing and lacking in our world today. The fact that, yes, you are a sinner, but that's not all you are. Unless that's how you choose to define yourself. And even in the midst of that, God calls you out of that. He calls you to be loved and to know love and to serve love and to be loving in our life. But sometimes it's hard because we have a past. Every sinner has a past. But we also have a future as well. And our future doesn't have to be dictated by our pasts. For every saint as well has a past. But yet, what defines them is the love of God. By our baptisms, we are called to strive for holiness. Some days we get it right. Some days we don't. And yet, God loves us to the end. So what's holding us back? Is it fear? Is it doubt? Is it anxiety? Is it depression? Let it go. Allow the Lord to love you. Allow the Lord to change your heart. And you can truly change the world. One heart at a time. Beginning with yourself. I truly believe that, for I'm a sinner, and yet God loves me. And you are sinners, and yet God loves you. So if for nothing else, I love you, even though you're sinners, even though you drive me crazy, even though you guys question every single little thing I do or don't do, even though you guys treat me like a red-headed stepchild sometimes, even though things never go how we want them to go, even though things are not perfect, I love you guys. Not because you deserve it, but because I don't. And yet God still loves. Hold on, my brothers and sisters, to that truth. Hold on to the mercy of Christ. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world.